Thanks for joining me. My name is Paul. Let's see what we have. How does a pair of loudspeakers create a three-dimensional soundstage, asks Joseph in Los Angeles. Wow, that's a great question. Um, the simple answer is one that, was it Alan Bloomline that invented basically stereo? Well, I don't think he invented it, but he certainly, he certainly did a lot of work on it and made it. <clears throat> and I remember that if my history is correct, Bloomline, this was during World War II or before World War II, a uh, great engineer, uh, Bloomline wanted to work on movies. And originally, when the talkies came in, in the late 30s, early 40s, I, I think, um, not a great history buff, but sometime way back then, long time ago, talkies came in, they were all monophonic, right? There was a behind the screen or maybe in front of the screen, there was one speaker and the, the voices came out of there, which never made a whole lot of sense to, to Bloomline because when he was sitting in the audience, if a guy walked across the stage, his voice stayed here. And as he came back and he was talking, his voice didn't move with him. So he decided that a better way to go about that would be to have a stereo speaker and the left obviously would be covered by a left speaker, the right by the right speaker. And what about the middle? Well, the middle, called the phantom center channel, if you will, was something that people had known about for years through stereoscopic uh, playback cameras. What do, you, what, what do we call those? The little viewers, I think. Um, and, and eyes and ears work the same way in that if, if you're, let's just take ears, because I'm no eye expert, though I, I do know that stereoscopic cameras work sort of, the, they, they move the image a little bit. You're looking at the same image, but slightly moved. Uh, so maybe that's not a great example, but uh, I believe that audio is probably a clearer example, one that I certainly know more about. If you hear the exact same thing in your left ear and your right ear, your brain puts it in the center, okay? That's just something that your brain does. And it really isn't in the center. It's called the phantom channel. And that's how we start to build a three-dimensional image, right? Now, the other thing that we are able to do is to tell depth and how far away something is. And how do we do that? Well, in real life, if I go like this, a couple of things are happening. This ear hears this sound first. This ear hears it a little bit later. And so that even with my eyes closed, I know that the sound hitting here, which comes first and is a little bit louder, and over here, which is a little bit softer and a little bit later, must originate over here. And the same is true if I were to go away from me or behind me or above me. We determine directionality and distance by using our two ears. And if the sound is identical and it's far away, well, we hear the same sound in both sides, but add to that a little bit of the room, okay? Now, if, if someone's far away, you'll the voice changes in a way that uh, if recorded properly, you'll hear some of the, the, the reflections off the room from a far away voice. And if it moves or it comes closer, those reflections become less, we get closer to the microphone and we can tell those cues. Now, I, I'm certainly no expert at it. I'm giving you a very simplistic view of how this works, but that's essentially what happens in a stereo system. We use the timing differences between left and right ears. We use the, the idea of, of reverberation within the room, reverberation being when a sound hits another object, takes time, bounces back to our ears. We can tell how long that happened from the initial event, and that's how we judge where something is, how big a room is, the distance of it. 
So that's, in a nutshell, how three-dimensional audio is created on a pair of loudspeakers or headphones recorded by a stereo microphone. I know it's kind of simplistic, and, and again, I'm no expert at this. I, I just, that's, you got what I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for asking the question. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.